If your bulk is slowing down or never really took off much to begin with, then there might be a few tweaks you can make to finally change your luck. So stick around for this whole video because I'm going to give you three bulky tips that can finally get you on the right track. Let's get it. First, let's cover our bases and quickly explain what bulking is. Bulking is a nutrition strategy with a primary goal of increasing body weight by simply increasing food intake measured by calories. Ideally, with the addition of resistance training and protein intake, the weight you gain consists primarily of muscle mass with very little in fat mass. So conceptually, bulking is pretty straightforward. You gotta eat and you gotta train. But as easy as it sounds, getting results, on the other hand, as you all know, can be tricky. And we're not talking about just short-term results, but let's be honest, who hasn't done a bunch of bicep curls and then flexed in the mirror thinking, oh man, my bulk is kicking and it's only been two days. In reality, our results might seem rather poor even after months of bulking. And if that's something you've experienced, then I definitely recommend trying out these three bulking tips I'm about to share with you. First up, if you're not seeing results from your bulk, you might want to take a break from bulking. What people don't realize is that a deliberate weight gain focused on increasing muscle mass can actually be very physically and mentally taxing. It can cause bloating issues, frustrations, and might even make you see food in a negative light, which can have a heavy impact on your progression and just overall well-being. It's not uncommon for people to question whether bulking is even worth it, especially if visually your muscles seem less defined due to the increase in body fat. And that's why taking a complete break from bulking, just like we would with cutting, can be a very good idea. That means going back to maintenance calories for about a week or so, but still try to maintain the same protein intake and training if you can. Now, don't expect a break to physiologically enhance your gains once you get back or anything. However, you might lose a bit of water weight, which can reveal a bit more muscle definition, which then you'll likely realize that you've made more gains from your bulk than you thought. Ultimately, just like for cutting, taking a break from bulk can give you a mental and physical reset that you didn't know you desperately needed. And once you get back to it, your bulking experience might go a lot smoother. Definitely give it a shot. The next bulking tip is to switch up your training. Although bulking does not technically cover training, they obviously go hand in hand and struggles in your training can lead to poor muscle gains. But you're probably asking, Mr. Picture Fats, how exactly should I switch up my training? Well, I actually have two recommendations here, which essentially makes this two tips in one, so a little bonus. First, if you're following a hypertrophy-based program, try to either add a strength component or switch to a strength-based program entirely. If your current program involves a lot of 10 to 15 rep sets where you rarely go above 70% one rep max, which is super popular for hypertrophy or bodybuilding programs, then you might be leaving a lot of strength gains on the table. Now, although you can build plenty of muscle without necessarily focusing on strength and vice versa, there will always be a correlation between the two. It's simple mathematics. The heavier weights you can lift, the higher your 1RM, the more volume you can do, which then can mean more muscle growth. So jump into a training block of about 4 to 12 weeks where you do something like 3 to 6 reps for 80 85% 1RM or higher. That way you can really drive that strength adaptation and push your volume to greater heights. The other training tip, interestingly, is to not really even bother with rep ranges, but more so your effort. If we look at the scientific literature, an important factor for muscle growth is taking your sets close to muscular failure. Unfortunately, training close to failure is something people hardly ever do. And don't worry, it's not just you fellow beginners, but some research has shown that experienced lifters have this problem as well. Now sure, the reason can be that people just don't want to train hard, but it's also likely that people just don't know what training to failure actually feels like. So if the final rep of each of your sets feels super easy, then you're gonna leave a lot of gains on the table. And that's where the concept of training with subjective effort scales like RPE and RIR comes into play. If you never heard of these, essentially they are scales that determine our proximity to failure in each set. For RPE, short for Ratings of Perceived Exertion, it's usually a 1 to 10 scale where 10 means you've reached maximum effort or reached failure. RIR is short for Reps in Reserve, which means exactly what it sounds like, and that's the amount of reps you have left in the tank after you finish your set. Just like a 10 RPE, an RIR of 0 means reaching failure. 
So if we want to get close to failure, we want to take our set to an 8 to 9 RPE or a 1 to 3 RIR. But to know how those ratings actually feel like, we need to know how training all the way to failure feels like first. And that's exactly what I would recommend everyone to do early on in their training experience. Now, of course, you want to be smart about it. Make sure you dial in your technique first, maintain good form throughout your reps, ask for help if you're not sure. We have a form check channel in our PictureFit community Discord, which can help. Make sure you are lifting safely and with a spotter if needed. And then do your reps to the point you can absolutely physically no longer move the weight up, even if your life depended on it. That's reaching failure. Also, make sure you're reaching failure in a variety of rep ranges, because failing at 5 reps feels very different than failing at something like 20 reps. Once you get failure locked down quite well, you can then implement an RPE or RIR oriented training protocol. It's still good to aim for a certain rep range, maybe like the usual 8 to 12 reps, as long as you make sure you get close to failure within that range. In the end, we're just trying to make sure the proper effort is there, which can very well make all the difference to your bulk. And the final bulking tip is to temporarily go on a smart, dirty bulk. Usually with bulking, you're trying to hit a calorie number that is just slightly above maintenance, like about three to 500 calories. That way, you're not gaining weight too quickly to avoid putting on too much body fat. However, since our calorie numbers are mostly estimates, it's not always guaranteed that we are eating in a surplus. Worst case, you might actually be in a deficit. For this reason, people often decide to dirty bulk instead, where you just eat so much food that you essentially guarantee you're in a surplus. But then that also means that you'll likely put on more body fat than you'd like. So what do I mean about doing a smart dirty bulk? Well, in this case, you are still going to aim for that surplus you originally calculated, but then eat above that, but only by eating more protein. This type of dirty bulk, in my opinion, is beneficial in three ways. One, protein and its amino acids are very essential to our bodies and bodily functions, so compared to fats and carbs, protein is the macronutrient least likely to be stored as body fat. Two, eating more protein has shown to increase satiety or the feeling of fullness. If you feel more full, your dirty bulk won't get too out of hand. Now, of course, if you're struggling to reach even your normal bulking numbers, then this is not a good thing. But if that is the case, it would be more important to look at your nutrition as a whole first anyway. And three, protein is the macronutrient for muscle protein synthesis, the process that drives muscle growth. So if you're one of the many that aren't eating enough protein, then the smart dirty bulk can help you out quite a bit. Now, I do recommend doing this just temporarily, especially if it does push your overall calorie intake way too high. But if there is a stark difference in your gains after doing this smart dirty bulk, then it probably means that your initial bulk estimates might be too low. So in a way, that's another benefit of this smart dirty bulk to help you realize you need to adjust your numbers. Give it a shot. There you have it, my fellow bulky bros and broettes. Three tips that can be the change you need to keep your bulk going strong. If you have tips of your own or want to fight me about my tips, well, then let's cross our tips in the comments below. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a bulky thumbs up and share it with your dirty bulk loving friends. Subscribe for more. And again, let me know what you think in the comments. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to get your protein.